the North Norfolk coast, where the North Sea meets East Anglia head-on. A wild coastline of glacial terminal moraine forming the rugged, undulating cliffs of Sheringham and Cromer, with their flint and sand beaches, a draw for the summer tourist trade. The reed beds and shingle banks of Salthouse and Cly, and the salt marshes of Morston, Blakeney and beyond. Northerly gales batter the coast, while cold weather extremes test the wildlife that call North Norfolk home. From the winter migrants like the pink-footed geese to the year-round residents, winter is a tough time where only the fittest survive. This film looks at the landscapes, weather and wildlife in the winter on the North Norfolk coast and what makes this part of Great Britain such a unique and special place all year round. Over 700 years ago, the area known as Cromer was actually inland with a medieval settlement called Shipton being on the coast of the north. It's said that the church is still out there, submerged in the water just offshore. It's not just in the summer that people enjoy the waters of the North Norfolk coast. Mother and daughter, Mary and Helen, like a handful of other locals, swim in the sea at Sheringham throughout the year with many swearing by the health benefits. I'll take their word for it. 10 miles to the west of Sheringham is Morston and the salt marshes which extend out to Blakeney Pit, a natural harbour sheltered behind the beautiful shingle spit of Blakeney Point. The salt marshes are part of a large site of special scientific interest, home to thousands of waders including curlews, oyster catchers and marsh harriers also recently colonised by little egrets, now a year-round breeding resident since first arriving in the UK in the 1950s. Heading back east is the village of Climax the Sea, with its extensive reed beds and home to the charismatic bearded tit, although it clearly has a moustache, not a beard. Inland of Cly is Kelling Heath, an expanse of gorse and heather with varied wildlife, which this year included some exotic visitors, waxwings. North Norfolk has a surprising diversity of wildlife if you learn how to look for it and head into the great outdoors. Whatever the weather, whatever the season, North Norfolk rewards the adventurous. In early January, we had the sad sight of another dead sperm whale washing ashore at Sheringham. Similar to the whale washed up at Weybourne late last year, another sub-adult male, possibly both part of a pod of ten whales, stranded on the Yorkshire coast a few weeks back. It's thought the whales have been following the squid down from Norway and have become lost in the shallower North Sea, a tragic loss for this vulnerable species. Each autumn sees the arrival of tens of thousands of pink-footed geese, the noisy skeins flying overhead providing an essential soundtrack to the North Norfolk winter. Coming over from Siberia to escape the colder weather, it's believed around 90% of the world's population of pink-footed geese overwinter here annually. Local farmers leave the beet tops on the surface of the fields rather than plough them in. This provides the geese with a rich food source and keeps them from destroying the winter barley crops. This flock on a field at Weybourne was estimated to contain over 10,000 individuals. Mm -hmm. 
Just down the road at the old site of RF Wayborn, 40 acres of previously farmed fields are to be turned over to nature and sowed with wild flower seed in this privately managed nature reserve. I'll be following the progress of the meadow throughout the year, along with the small flock of Scottish black-faced sheep on a neighbouring field during their lambing season as Shepherd Steve and his trusty sheepdog Ben keep a watchful eye on the flock and their bespectacled ram. Having had little snow in previous years, we had a double helping this winter with a cold snap in mid-January, just a taste of what was to come in February. With the coast transformed overnight into a winter wonderland, it was a great opportunity to brave the weather and capture the cliffs looking more Siberia than Anglia. Along the coast road at Clyde, the snow continued to fall. The fishing boats and pots on the beach are waiting fair weather when the crab fishing can resume once again. Inland at Felbrig Hall, the snow and frost created beautiful winter scenes with the wildlife battling to survive the cold conditions. The National Trust policy of leaving fallen trees to rot naturally provides interesting skeletal forms as they gradually return to the earth. On the frozen lake, the gulls struggle to master ice skating without much luck. While over at Bayfield Hall, the calls from a small flock of pink-footed geese echoed through the valley, their breath steaming into the cold morning air. Wildlife camera traps are a great way to work out locations for filming the more secretive wildlife. By placing three at various locations in the North Norfolk countryside, with the permission of the landowners, I was able to work out the best places to find some of the mammals that live on the coast. This distinctive muntjac buck with one white eye was a regular visitor. But things got really interesting at night. This roebuck still showing the velvet on his antlers, lost later in the year ready for rutting. The highlight for me was capturing a number of badger on the cameras, one of the sets clearly having a very healthy population of many individuals. A group of badgers is known as a clan. I positioned one camera just outside the entrance of a set occupied by a big male known as a boar. Like pigs, the females are known as sows. Although the resident didn't seem impressed and showed his disdain by showering the camera with dirt. But it got even better when I realised one of the badgers was a rare erythritic badger. Lacking much of the black pigmentation, these badgers have pale blonde fur where the black should be. I'm hoping to film some of this badger clan on the proper camera in the summer and maybe even get another noisy fight. In early February we were blasted by a northerly gale, whipping the sea into angry waves, battering the coast once more. With nothing but water between the North Norfolk coast and Greenland to the north, the wind has thousands of miles in which to generate the waves over the water's surface, an area known as Fetch. 
With the waves travelling over such huge distances, massive amounts of energy built up over many hours are dissipated on the beaches of North Norfolk. If the tides are high enough, the waves can reach the cliffs or breach the shingle banks, resulting in this constantly changing coastline where nothing is ever set in stone. Just two days later, the weather brought yet another change to the landscape with the heaviest fall of snow we've seen in a few years. Although the wind had dropped slightly, the snow drifted in some places, creating areas feet deep. As the snow flurries came and went, the snow deepened and settled, with the Cromer seafront and church taking on the appearance of a Christmas card. Along the coast of Blakeney, sailing barge Juno sat alone in the snow at her winter dry mooring. While the coiling creeks and gullies on the salt marsh became more defined than usual. The colder weather on the continent brought tens of thousands of woodcock over to our shores in the hope of a better chance of survival. While the snow lasted, I took the long walk out to Blakeney Point. I didn't see another person out there all day, and judging by the single set of footprints on the beach on my way home, I was the only person to walk the nine miles there and back that day. The tough walk was rewarded by stunning scenes, with the old lifeboat station standing out proudly against the snow in the distinctive bold blue that this iconic building is famous for. Only weeks previous I'd been on the point with thousands of grey seals, but this time I was lucky to find just one lone seal sheltering from the breeze. As the sun came out, the waves continued to crash upon the shore, the white foam catching the light in the otherwise murky water. As I returned along the beach, the sun began to set, and a snow squall approached, turning the light orange before it enveloped me completely, obscuring the sun 
and turning into a grey twilight in a matter of seconds. As February progressed, the weather started to warm and nature showed signs that spring was just around the corner. At Sheringham Park, the woodlands were adorned with beds of pure white snowdrops, while daffodils and crocuses added welcome colour. The pink-footed geese became restless for their long journey back to Siberia, taking the last opportunity to find energy for the migration. While on the beaches, people emerged from their winter recluse to take in the sun. The beach just west of Sheringham showed the effects of the easterly winds, which had scoured the sand, revealing the chalk beds beneath. The same chalk that makes the North Norfolk Chalk Reef, home to the crabs and lobsters which brought these towns into being. While it will take months for the sea temperature to rise to a bearable level for most, I followed some hardy sea swimmers on a sunset swim at high tide. With the sun setting to the west and a full moon rising to the east, it was a magical time to be out on the water, with the promise of great days ahead. It's been a long winter, probably the toughest many of us have known, but there is light at the end of the tunnel, and in my next film I'll be following spring as the days get longer and life becomes easier.